Not only did Michelle make this very delicious looking cheeseburger, but we raised this beef ourselves. And Michelle wants to show you how she makes the burgers, how she makes her steaks and roasts. And we also want to show you how we store all of the beef we need for our family of six. But first you need to hear how this beef came to be because most of our beef raising endeavors are pretty chill, but this one was a little different. I should have planned ahead better and bought a calf to raise for beef, but I didn't think far enough ahead and I ended up needing to buy something that was already halfway raised. About the only option, good option I could find around us was a heifer off of a bucking bull ranch. Because we're more than farmers. Y'all remember Peaches? Ooh, girl. She is the rodeo heifer that we got. And it's time now to take her in to get processed. Unloading her was crazy enough. She kind of went wild when she first got in here. I feel like she has tamed down a lot since she's been on our homestead, but I didn't spend the time with her that I wanted to and actually get her tamed. Both of the cows are in the back pasture right now. So what I'm thinking is if I lead Maddie up here, Peaches will follow, bring them both up in here, and then we can use these gates to close them in and get them pushed up there and then try to get Peaches to go into the trailer. Still don't have my own truck, still don't have my own trailer, but I've got a dad with a truck and a good friend with a trailer, so do what I gotta do for now and maybe eventually I'll get my own. Okay, you guys go over there a little bit. Now I've done this part several times before, moving them go. from one pasture to the other. On, so man. even though Peaches is pretty frisky, I'm not too worried about it. It's the next oh, part that I'm a little scared of, and soon you'll see why. Oh, girl. There we go. Oh, girls. Okay. This is where it's gonna get interesting. Come on. Maddie's like, I will. <laughs> I thought maybe separating them would be a good idea. Keeping Maddie up there so Peaches isn't quite as nervous, but separating them so that I could just focus on getting Peaches into the trailer. That might not have been the best idea. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. That was so close. I could see the spot on my t-shirt where her hoof swiped it. A couple inches closer and I'm sure I would have been in the hospital with some broken ribs. That was not fun. And you think I would have learned my lesson, but I didn't. Michelle told me to stop trying and to figure something else out, but I just kept trying because I needed to get her to the processor before they closed that evening, and I was already cutting it close. It's pretty obvious that I'm just not set up to deal with rodeo heifers. Now before you get all comment happy, I already know that it wasn't wise and I already have plans for what to do and how to set it up to deal with this in the future. I'm sharing this with you so you can learn from my mistakes. And after she crumpled that gate, I knew I had to do something different. I got a bunch more gates from my dad and I enlisted his help. I got everything set up to make it so that we could just load her straight in. We actually ended up leading Maddie into the trailer and then getting Peaches to follow her in there. We got Maddie turned around and back out of there with Peaches shut inside. Oh. <laughs> Nobody got hurt and we're good to go to take her to the processor in the morning. She walked off of that trailer and into the stall there at the processor just like a little lamb. Nothing like yesterday. Yesterday was more of a rodeo than I want to have again. For the next one, I'm going to get some more gates. I'm going to get some equipment to make it easier. I, I can't do that again. It was dangerous and it was just really not fun. But we got it done, thankful for that, and we'll be getting fresh beef in about two weeks. If you saw our last video, which in real time actually came after this one, you'll remember that we got a new freezer because our two other freezers were full. We were trying to stay ahead of the game here by getting another freezer before we got the beef home, but the one we wanted was out of stock. That's a lot of beef. The beef gets quartered on the first day, then it hangs for about 10 days or so, then they cut it to how we want it, and then they freeze it. So now I'm here picking up frozen beef to take home to put in our freezer. Here's the suet. This is what we'll make into tallow. If you ever do, go to pick up your own beef. Make sure you bring gloves. This stuff gets cold after you handle three, four, or 500 pounds. Oh, look at those steaks. All right, let's go get a freezer.
We needed to clean out our other two freezers anyway, so we decided to take everything out of one of the older ones and put it into the new one. That was mostly chicken, and we talked about that in our last video. Really, it would be best to actually defrost this and let it like fall out and clean up, but we don't have time for that. We gotta put beef in here now. I'm going to be weighing all of the beef as I bring it downstairs and then I'll let you know later how much we got. I didn't get a live weight of peaches before we took her in, but the hanging weight was about 600 pounds. We put some of the ground beef into the freezer over the top of our extra fridge for easy access and the rest of the beef will go into that older freezer that we just cleaned out. And speaking of ground beef, it's time for our first taste of this stuff. We're cooking up some beef and we're going to have our very first taste test. We're having loaded sweet potatoes, so here we've got sweet potatoes. We'll put butter and salt and fresh tomatoes and beef and all the things on here. It's cooking up like so juicy. I have high hopes for this. It is spot on. I can't wait for Cody to taste this. All right, let's try this stuff out. It looks good. That is really good. Nice and tender melts in the juicy. mouth. It is very juicy. I'm so excited about these beef chuck blade roasts. Oh my goodness, they're the best. This right here is a beef chuck blade roast. These are my absolute favorite roasts. It does have a bone in it and the bone just really helps to soften everything up because there's like fat in there, beautiful. This is a really good meal for days where you're in a hurry and you know that your evenings are gonna be busy. You just pat both sides of this thing dry and then I just take some salt, pepper, and dried thyme from my garden and I sprinkle it over this. I'm gonna sear this roast on both sides until it's like a nice dark crispy brown. I normally deglaze my cast iron pan with some wine or bone broth, but of course today I'm out of both. So I'm just going to do some water and a splash of balsamic vinegar and it'll still have all those great flavors in there to pour over top of the roast. It's very important to add fat to grass-fed beef because the meat tends to be more lean, but if you treat it gently and add some fat, it is the best meat out there. About an hour or two before supper, I'm gonna put some potatoes and carrots and onions around the roast, and there you have a full rounded meal, and it's literally the easiest thing in the world. The roast beef is done now. It baked at 325 for around three to four hours, and it is perfect. We have only had hamburger for so long, so I am really, really excited about having some cuts. And this roast looks really good. Mm. That's good. I'm putting all the steaks in one box and then all of the roasts in another box. I just like to have everything separated so that I know exactly what I'm getting. I am not, if I'm honest, a huge fan of the beef chuck short ribs. I mean, there's just not very much meat on them. They're really greasy and I just find them difficult to work with. But if anybody has any really good recipes for this, you can let me know. I really also love these shank cross cuts. They're small, but man, they make the best roast beef. Top loin steak. <laughs> yeah. The loin steaks are so good. I'm gonna cook up a steak here. This is a loin steak. These are my all time favorite steaks. I like to season my steaks with salt and pepper and some thyme. I do not like to over season steaks. You really just want enough seasoning to let the meat really shine. I have beef tallow in a cast iron skillet here. You want your skillet to be piping hot before you put your room temperature steak in there. I like to sear my steaks on both sides, two minutes per side, and then I finish them off in a very hot oven, 425 for five minutes. We like our steak to be pretty pink in the middle. That's just the most tender, juicy steak in our opinion. I do like to deglaze my pan in between steaks because I feel like it makes for a much better sear, but I'm gonna let this cool down for just a little bit before I deglaze. I'm gonna deglaze with a little bit of bone broth. 
I love to do this with wine that makes for the most delightful steaks, but I am out of wine right now. I have missed this. T-bone steaks, roast loin. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> this is a beef heart. I'm not like insanely great at making brisket, but I have made some pretty good brisket in the past. I still, with brisket, I am new enough at it that I follow directions pretty carefully. Lots of beef suet that will make some amazing tallow. When I was just learning to make steak and use all the different cuts and stuff from a whole beef, I tried to cook up a beef shank cross cut like I would a steak. <laughs> it was so tough, we couldn't eat it. My favorite is the Those. beef shank cross cuts. So personal info, I don't have any molars back here. <laughs> and I'm missing like one or two over here. Uh, that's kind of how actually we got started with healthy eating or how I got started is I was having really bad teeth problems and I had to get a bunch of teeth pulled. So chewing steak is a bit of a struggle for me. I absolutely love when Michelle makes these beef shank cross cuts. They just so like fall apart when you Fall cook apart, them right. delicious. delicious. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you got my funny bone. Ta-da! This is my official record-keeping piece of cardboard. We got 140 pounds of burger and 212 pounds of cuts. Peaches was a smaller beef, which I was a little bit disappointed with how I thought she would grow bigger than that. If you're looking into getting to the place where you turn your basement or whatever into your grocery store, one of the best places to start is to get yourself a chest freezer and buy like half a beef. Find local farmers who are raising grass-fed beef and that can really make a difference for your grocery bill and just for your peace of mind knowing what you're eating. We're about to get to making that cheeseburger that you saw at the beginning of the video, but real quick, in retrospect, I should have specified that we wanted more burger and less cuts because burger is more versatile and easier for Michelle to cook with, but this is only about the fourth time that we've taken our own beef in and I'm still learning how it all comes out. We're hoping to do a video in the future breaking down the cost of raising our own grass-fed beef and other food that we store versus grocery store prices but for now just know that this came out to less than half of what it would have cost to buy this at the grocery store plus we know exactly how this beef was raised I'm gonna be making cheeseburgers tonight for supper hamburger is my very favorite meat to work with just simply because it's so easy so much easier in my opinion than a steak or even a roast beef the way I make hamburgers is I just add some oat flour and an egg to the bowl and salt and pepper and mix it right up. And of course, I don't have a recipe. I just wing it. I also like to add just a tiny bit of smoked paprika. Not much, just a tiny bit. I have a little bit of beef tallow in here and I'm gonna fry these up. You want to have your pan nice and hot when you put your hamburgers on. That way they'll get this nice, yummy sear on them. I grabbed some lettuce from the raised bed right here in front of the house. I also have tomatoes. We picked these green and brought them in and they've just been slowly ripening inside. Here I have some homemade mayo and some zucchini relish that I canned, and barbecue sauce that I canned. Cheeseburgers are my absolute favorite food, and Michelle makes the best, so I can't wait to try this. Nailed it, babe. To see more of the ways that we use the food that we raise and grow in our homestead, you're going to want to watch this video next.